good morning. I'm looking at Israel trip information, flights and other things, and just seeing uh, what the best deal is going to be. So, we have made it to Matthew chapter 5, verse 33. Mark out of the way so I can see. Hmm. Again, you have heard, it's been said to those of old. There's our saying again. You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is God's footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no, no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. So, there you have it. I've got notes in my Bible about oaths. Don't even know what the refers to. I got Romans 9.1. So I'll flip over there and we'll see what we see. It says, I tell you the truth in Christ, I am not lying. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit. It's kind of like he's swearing that he's telling the truth. Second Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.23. It says... Moreover, I call God as witness against my soul that to spare you, I came no more to Corinth. <gasps> I swear God is my witness. Paul obviously never read the Sermon on the Mount. No, this is the idea is I have a little one more reminder for me. Actually, it's probably the first one actually written in my Bible is that this isn't a list of rules. Have you heard me say that before? It's about Jesus raising the bar. And the point is, is not that saying an oath is wrong, right? Many people, again, they like to take the Sermon on the Mount and they turn it into a rule book. And then it's like we're in trouble if we broke something on the Sermon on the Mount. Now, some of these other things like looking with lust or uh, having hatred and anger in our hearts. Yeah, those are things you just never want to do. But the idea with this performing oaths, I, I don't think the point is to say you've failed or erred if you say God is my witness. But one of his points here is trying to point out that we shouldn't ever need to say that. And it's that last verse that let your yes be yes and your no be no. Just be a person of integrity. Just be a person who does what they say they're going to do and doesn't do what they say they're not going to do. You don't need to swear up and, and say all these things. And, and he gives all these examples, right? He, he talks about swearing by heaven. Well, he's like, well, that's God's throne. That's not for you to swear by. Nor by the earth. It's his footstool. Nor by Jerusalem. And, and you know, there's talk about swearing by the gold of the temple. No one would do that. And part of the idea is, is that people would make these lofty oaths and they'd swear upon their mother's grave. Well, if you break your promise, what happens to your mother's grave, honestly? Do you have to dig her up? I don't know. People swear on their mother's grave, but who? I don't know what that actually means at the end of the day. And, but that's the point, is that people use all these superfluous words, you know, big things to try and show how serious they are. But, you know, if it was just a serious person, you wouldn't have to have them say all that stuff, would you? If you had a reputation of being a person of integrity, then you don't need all this, which is where I think Jesus was trying to go. He just wants us to be people of integrity. And he says, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. and what he's trying to say is that well yeah if you're if you're needing to make up these excuses it's 
probably because there's something wrong, right? I mean, like, if you feel like you need to really emphasize your seriousness, well, that just sounds fishy, you know? It just seems a little bit fishy. And so that's the emphasis here. That's the point that's trying to be made, is that we shouldn't need to swear by this or swear by that or pinky promise. And there's nothing wrong with a pinky promise. Kind of cute if you're a toddler or a kid. But for us grown-ups, just be a man of your word or a woman of your word. If you say you're going to be somewhere, go. If you say you're going to take care of something, do it. If you are expected to show up somewhere, show up, and even on time. So that's the whole emphasis, is, is in these three verses, four verses, five, one, two, three, four, five verses, Jesus is trying to just encourage integrity in the Christian, making us realize that, yeah, the bar is up here. If we say things, we're going to do them because we're Christians and we're going to fall short and fail like we do at all these other things he's talked about. But on the whole, this is the bar. This is what we're aiming for. This is what we know is acceptable in the sight of our Lord. So kind of short and sweet today. We'll get into the next section tomorrow. So there you go, Christian. Be a man or woman of integrity. Let your yes be yes. And let your no be no. And let there be no need for anything beyond that. That's what I've got for you this morning. Hope to see some of you guys at prayer. I'll be there. Adios.